Okay, we're going to do a quick recorking um, of my tenor saxophone's neck. Usually I do this uh, once a year, but since 2020 um, was basically wiped out gig-wise because of COVID, and uh, I had, you know, other things to do. Um, I really didn't get around to it until now, but as you can see here, I don't have an autofocus on this camera, so I'm going to be manually focusing as we go along. Okay, and as you see here, the compression is really starting to get to a, uh, a limit where the mouthpiece is really wiggling. You can really feel that, and it's creating a leak right here. And what that is subsequently doing is adding a lot more resistance and removing a lot of response. So, time to uh, remove the old and uh, put on a new. And what I'm going to use for this recorking is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to use one of the prefab uh, neck corks. You can get these off of Amazon or Music Medic. What's nice about them, pull that in. What's nice about these, they have a naturally cut taper. Um, I'll show you what that's used for later. Basically, it's going to be a glue joint right there. So, to give you a quick rundown of everything that I'm using here, first thing, are going to be a set of screwdrivers. This is just to remove the um, uh, octave key itself, set it aside. Um, basically, because we'll be using acetone, and you don't want that on the pads. It will eat right through the leather. A um, little strip of 260 grit sandpaper, some key oil for the octave key once I reassemble that. Uh, this is contact cement, awesome, awesome adhesive. Uh, kind of like rubber cement, but um, the adhesive is a lot stronger. And if you're, you've um, never done this before, what I recommend doing is cutting out a piece of paper. This is just um, wrapping paper. Uh, make sure it's the same size as the cork you're working with. And the neck itself is conical, so there has to be, um, there's a natural taper even uh, at the beginning where the uh, neck cork goes on. So I'll show you why it's important to have that paper later. And this is just standard run-of-the-mill nail polish remover. It's 100% acetone. And that is going to be used in order to uh, remove the extra adhesive from the neck before we put the new cork on. And exacto knife. This will be used to cut off um, the extra, the old cork, scrape off um, all the little remnants. And this is just a cigar blowtorch. We're going to use that uh, to heat up the neck and um, basically heat up the old adhesive, soften it up, and that will help remove the existing cork. Um, last but not least, I typically use a larger uh, rubber mallet. I don't have it on me today, so what I'm going to use right here is just a... Uh, this is a standard jeweler's mallet. And we're going to use that basically to beat down and compress, pre-compress the uh, new cork. It helps um, make the cork a little bit more flexible, a little bit easier to work with. And first things first, we're going to remove the octave key. I um, like these little Stanley screwdrivers for basic screw work. Uh, you could uh, really get much better, more expensive um, screwdrivers and I highly recommend that if you're doing more advanced key work but for something as simple as this, these work great. What's really nice, this uh, yellow casing, you could, uh, there's a little rod screw that actually holds this on. You can throw it in there, it makes it real nice and visible, you can see where it is so you don't lose it. Okay, step two, we're going to uh, heat up the neck and pop off that old uh, cork. Um, and if you have any uh, food or excess crud in there that uh, 
shouldn't be in the neck to begin with, it will most definitely burn. You will get a little funk smell, which is telling me that I also need to um, clean this out. But you'll actually feel it'll start um, moving a little bit. Once that happens, uh, you're ready to cut the cork and scrape it off. And one thing that you'll notice I'm doing, I'm keeping my thumb right at the base where the cork is. And everything beyond here is basically um, damaged lacquer to begin with. Now that the bulk of the uh, cork and glue have been scraped off, I'm going to use um, the acetone nail polish remover, soak the paper towel, and just uh, rub the rest of it off. And that should be uh, pretty smooth to the touch all around. If you feel any rough spots, like right down there, you still have a little bit more residue. Just keep scraping away until you get all of that off. Take a exacto again, get the rest of that off. Kind of hard to do with the camera in your way, so I'm trying to be extra careful so I'm not going uh, overboard with the knife. Okay, now we're going to take our wrapping paper. Remember why I said there's a taper? What that means is you can't just line up the cork perfectly straight and expect it to wrap around because it's actually going to jump down there. So what you have to do is kind of angle it. Show that you this so it can pick up. Um, you want to turn it to the right and kind of cock it up upwards when it's going around. That, that's a very exaggerated view right there, but um, that's basically what I'm doing. You can experiment with this a little bit. And I also like keeping the um, cork at the very bottom of the neck, and this is purely aesthetic. Um, so when you're looking at it, if you're getting pictures done from the side of the horn, you're not seeing the um, actual seam of where the cork folds in on itself. Um, so the bottom kind of hides it the best. Um, especially if you're like in a wedding band or something like that. It just makes it look a little bit more pleasing. But um, yeah, what you'll want to do is just kind of experiment around with this taper, get an idea of how that's supposed to feel. And when you actually work with the real neck, or a neck cork rather, um, you'll have an idea of how it's supposed to lay. Um, now with that said, 
like I said before, I like those little packs of um, neck corks that you can get off of uh, Amazon. Um, they come pre-cut with a taper. Basically, you put glue on top of that. And the reason being, okay, you can see the... Let's see if I could uh, get that closer in focus for you. very hard to see but there's the taper it's cutting up like this um, and what that is used for you lay that down so the taper the cutaway is facing up and you actually put glue on that so when you wrap the cork around this is what holds um, the excess cork when it wraps then what we'll do is just trim that down um, and sand it so you have a very um, smooth seam. And I forgot to um, charge my uh, good camera's battery, derp. And I wanted to get this part done before it gets too late because this part's a little noisy. I'm just going to use a jeweler's hammer to um, pound the cork down, and this just makes it a little bit more malleable uh, when you're wrapping around the neck. This is called a locking ring right here. Uh, it's found on summer horns. Some saxophones have them, typically professional horns. N not everyone, but a good majority. Um, you can't just take the cork and cover that up and trim it. Because what happens is you get an air bubble right in between um, the actual neck. Um, and the locking ring so you'll have a gap right in there that's very hard to fill with you know adhesive what happens is when you're putting the mouthpiece on pulling it off that air bubble will eventually put pressure on the cork and the cork will start ripping right there so that's why it's generally better to um, put the neck cork at the neck and then just keep the um, uh, ring ex exposed so the next step is to actually apply our um, contact cement onto the uh, seam right there, um, the underside of the cork that will be contacting the neck and the neck itself. And like I said before, this works very similar to um, rubber cement. So the best way to apply it is actually to apply it to both surfaces, let it dry, become somewhat tacky, and then um, mate the two glued surfaces together. That just creates a uh, stronger bond. And one thing I forgot to do, I'm going to do that right now. See where um, I actually have more cork than need be. So I'm going to actually just uh, take an X-Acto knife, cut that down to where I need it um, as the glue's drying. It's not ideal what I just did there, but uh, it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. And I'm cutting on top of a little music metric uh, cigar box right here. Just gonna do a quick little match there. Okay. 
I was pretty careful there in not touching um, the glue in the areas where it actually has to be um, uh, adhering to each other. So, yeah, don't do what I did there. You're just going to tightly but firmly push everything down. Then you can take your X-Acto knife, um, cut off a little extra around the uh, tone ring, and that's actually the edge where I did that emergency cut. Once again, don't do that. Make sure you <laughs> keep your steps in order. I mean, you can. It's not going to really screw up anything in the long run. It's just more of a pain in the rear end doing it that way. But, yeah, you'll just want to keep pressing that down, making sure you don't have any air bubbles in there. Because that is going to be your seal right now. If you screw that up, you're basically down to... um square one and have to start this process all over again it's all over again and like like i said um those little six packs that you could get from amazon or music medic are a godsend uh, especially if you've never done this before that way if you do screw it up you basically just scrape off the cork that you botched put another one back on learn from your mistakes and try again and Honestly, there's two things uh, holding me back right now. One, I haven't done this in two years. Uh, second thing is trying to do this when you're narrating and um, focusing on the camera as you're doing the work isn't ideal. But, hey, it's still fun to watch, right? So, we're just going to trim... Make sure that's in frame. Trim that excess right off. Level that out. And when I'm sanding, I'll also be tapering this side down a bit too. Make it a little easier for the mouthpiece to slide on and off. I mean, that's pretty much that. So, I'll give this another couple minutes to dry. And then I'm just going to get my exacto in there, slice off this excess, and that's where the uh, fun begins with sanding. Okay, I'm going to... Um, okay, now that that's dry, I'm going to just put this down and on our uh, cigar box here and slice that. And when I'm doing this... And when I'm doing this, I'm going to leave a little bit extra in the slice because I could sand that. It's a lot better to leave more on and then trim it finely than um, taking too much off and then tearing the seam because that means you're also going to be back to square one again. And by the way, when you have, um, and by the way, this excess cork right here can't be useful for bumper materials, um, various little odds and ends on the saxophone. Uh, you'll see that one side already does have some glue on it, but you could basically just touch that, make the adhesiveness go away with the oils on your fingers. Um, then you could sand that down later, reuse it as bumper material, or little um, use little scraps as needed. And obviously you can't put a mouthpiece on that, so we're going to have to 
trim that down a little bit more and then start sanding. And you see there's a little knob right there. We're going to trim that down. Okay, and that's still very rough at this point, but it's already starting to take shape. You can see the seams coming together. One thing I noticed I did on this one, the end seam ended up being further um, on the side of the mouthpiece than I wanted. Um, so one thing you have to take into consideration when you have that taper, you want to look at the very end of the taper to see where the um, seam is going to line up. I uh, messed up there and lined up the end of the, or uh, the very start of the cork and assumed that it was going to wrap there. So. One of those things that you remember after you do it, so if cosmetics are important to you, see that's blending in pretty well, even at this point, so it's not too big of a deal, but just something to keep in mind. And what we're going to do, see it's still a little rough right here, actually I'm going to bring in a used emery um, board that I've been using, and just round that out a little bit. I say a used emery board because it's a little bit worn, a little bit finer than um, it would be at full strength. So, just to round out those rough edges. It's mostly for cosmetic purposes, then you're getting the little scraps that shouldn't be in there off of that. That way they're not falling into your mouthpiece, into your chamber, and into your horn. Okay. And the last thing we have to do, basically to finish off with the sanding, but you want it to um, fit your mouthpiece, your primary mouthpiece that you're using. See right here we have a quite a bit to take off. Um, you want to taper it so prime, um, most of your sanding is going to be up front and then uh, you'll do less sanding as it goes up the taper. Um, you want it to fit snug, maybe a little bit more snug than it should be without cork grease then you could grease it up and then uh, the piece should seal pretty well. It should be firm, um, not overly firm but just firm enough where you could put the mouthpiece on and it locks in place pretty well. You don't want it, you don't want to overdo this because otherwise you're going to be back to um, <laughs> why we uh, changed this cork in the first place where the mouthpiece is kind of wobbling all over the place. And what I like doing See if this piece is actually long enough to do this. Ideally, what I would typically do is actually hold the neck in between my legs, in between um, basically my thighs, just using a soft muscle to hold everything into place. And then I grab both sides like this with uh, my fingers and then just keep rubbing it back and forth. It's a little bit faster to sand it that way. I don't have that luxury today in front of the camera, so trying to figure out a new technique here. Okay, so wrapping around isn't going to work, so I'm just going to have to do this. And you could periodically check on it like this and see the seam is still there. So you um, have a better idea of where you need to sand more, spend more of your time sanding.
and you could also line up the mouthpiece see exactly where it's hanging gives you just a little means to see exactly uh, where the trouble spot is and still right along the seam even though you're eyeballing that it's starting to really flatten out Okay, you can already feel it's getting to right around where I want it. I'm going to give it a once over, a little fine tuning work. Blow the cork dust out of my mouthpiece there. And we'll uh, put some cork grease on the cork and uh, we'll be done. Oh, and the idea um, when you're looking at this, since the neck is tapering, theoretically the um, uh, cork in the rear should be a little bit thinner than up front. Uh, the idea is you want it kind of to, uh, to be a perfect cylinder. And that way it makes the mouthpiece easier to pull on and off. Um, generally, like I said before, you're tapering it more, so you're doing more sanding here. When you're finishing it off, you do want to focus on the back though to make sure it's even all the way around, which this one laid on pretty well. I mean, considering how long it's been since I've done this, i um, pretty happy with it. But the better that you... But the uh, more time that you spend actually fine-tuning this, I found that the uh, longer this typically lasts. Like I said, I got away with the last one for two years. Environmental conditions, how often you play. Um, also factor in, but generally speaking, if you're just an average player, pulling out the horn a couple of times a week, this will probably last you a long time if you do it right. And once again, when I'm focusing on the rear here, keeping my thumb right there to prevent me from nicking up the uh, rest of the neck. And this here is our little um, rod screw that actually holds the octave key on. A um, little bit of that grime right there is just the cork dust for me working in here. But the uh, um, black grime is actually used oil. So I did, I put a little degreaser on here. I'm just gonna take a piece of paper towel, clean it off. And typically I go through all my key work like once a year, wipe it down, re-oil everything. That just makes sure that uh, the oil doesn't uh, get worn out, it gets tacky, and then uh, your keys start binding, because that's a very bad thing. But, oh, and I also, um, off camera, I took a pipe cleaner and cleaned out the um, receiving end of this and wiped it all down to get some of my uh, hand oils off there. Preserves the lacquer a little bit more. And the other thing I will oil Two things I will oil will be the, um, the rod screw itself. If I can get that back in focus, there we are. Far rod screw itself and then the um, spring. And oiling the springs is very, very important. I found, especially if you're doing like a lot of outdoor gigs, summertime, hot, humid environments, um, water will actually do water humidity will actually attract to these metal pieces and these are steel unlike the brass 
which won't rust, these will. Um, so if you're in an area with high humidity like the Northeast or um, uh, in like uh, one of the coastal areas, you know, where you have a lot of salt water flying around, be pretty mindful of that. Uh, oil is a little bit more important to you than it would be in like a arid desert region. But, whoop, actually got just a little drop. Little drop already coming out of the oil there. Oh, but let me move that closer. And, there we go. Got a little drop coming out of the oil there. Just, that's all it needs. And you just take that drop, spread it throughout the rod. And a layer of uh, protective oil for the spring. Same thing, you just want a drop for something like this. Does not take much at all. Try to coat everywhere you can. Um, especially pay attention to the little grub screw down here. Your tech will love you whenever it's time to. Uh, get this overhauled because if you ignore this stuff you know the springs will snap when rust starts affecting them uh, the other issue is you'll get corrosion build up in those threads then it becomes an absolute nightmare trying to get those off you're using you know penetrating oils um, very uh, good screwdrivers <laughs> and a little bit of elbow grease and luck so just take a few preventative measures since you're in here, your tech will thank you in the long run. Okay, now that everything's back together again, we're just going to put on a layer of cork grease, get the mouthpiece on, and we're finished. And generally, what I like doing to um, prevent excess cork grease from ending up on, well, everywhere, it's best to take, you know, stick, or if you have the little containers, just dip your finger in there. Just, just enough to coat your finger a little bit it really doesn't take that much at all in fact I might need a little bit more than that for this because this is the initial um, <laughs> running of the uh, cork grease but honestly um, that's about as much as I use only semi regularly when I have to doesn't you don't want to overdo the cork grease thing But since this is a brand new cork, it's very absorbent, so you're going to have to do that a couple times. For regular maintenance, less is more. And there's a old school <laughs> Saks method. Um, if you're out of cork grease, all of my elders taught me, you just use... Um, get that back in focus there. You just use your... Um, nose grease, the oils that build up uh, right around the sides of your nose, rub, run your finger around that and then apply it to the cork. And that really does give you an idea of how little oil you need on a regular basis. If it's gripping, you hear um, like a dry squeaking sound whenever you're getting your mouthpiece on or off the cork, yeah then you want to definitely put some oil on, cork grease. Just a light lubricant to prevent the um, mouthpiece from gripping onto the cork and ripping it off. Because that happens. If you ever ever dealt with um, middle school, high school bands, that happens quite frequently, especially um, when the weather changes. It gets really cold, most usually. And it's no fun to deal with. You can make a quick makeshift cork out of masking tape if you understand the tapering, but it's no fun. It only lasts once. And that is that. A little bit of 
get that extra cork grease off there. Okay, now you got a nice solid cork. Holds the mouthpiece on, no wobbling. Everything's pretty even. Only real gripe I have about this is I didn't get the seam exactly where I want, but sometimes you win them, some, sometimes you lose them. Still, it's going to be just something I notice. <laughs> but, um, yeah, while I'm here and was staring at my neck, I also noticed that I have a little bit of grime up uh, in the front there, so um, probably just swab this out with a little bit of, uh, well, wrap a little saran wrap around the um, pad there, uh, plug this up with plumber's putty, keep this upside down in a bowl with um, any type of vinegar in there for about a half hour, then run warm water through it. And that will clear all that out. Very little. I typically don't have issues with buildup. I mean, based upon your body chemistry, some people have more issues with it than others, but even if you notice just a little bit of that grime in there, you want to get that out because that is affecting your um, experience. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, enduring me or uh, dealing with me uh, trying to do this and manage a manual focus camera. Uh, hope you enjoyed the speed run.